Here is a common feature among mammals, and it serves several important functions, such as keeping us warm, protecting us from the sun's harmful rays, shielding us from germs and bugs, and even helping us express our emotions by raising the hairs on our skin. However, some mammals have evolved to be hairless. Naked mole rats are hairless because they live underground and stay close together to keep warm. Aquatic animals like dolphins and whales have very little hair because it helps them swim faster. Larger land animals often have less hair because it's hard for them to get rid of excess heat. And then there are humans. We are unique because we have very little body hair compared to our closest relatives, chimpanzees. The question is, why did we humans lose so much of body hair? That's what scientists are trying to figure out. Some believe it was because we needed to stay cool while walking on two legs. Some think it was to reduce the risk of parasites and others suggest it might have been related to social behavior. Researchers are studying when this hair loss happened and how it connects to different ideas. Here is something that mammals, including humans, have. It grows from little pockets called hair follicles just below our skin's surface. In humans, all hair follicles are connected to tiny glands. Some are related to sweat and others make an oily substance that helps keep our hair healthy. Each hair is made up of three parts. The outside layer, the cuticle, the middle part, cortex and the innermost part medulla. The cortex gives our hair its color and different shapes of hair can make it straight or curly. We have different types of hair all over our bodies. The big visible and dark hair are called terminal hairs. They are in places like scalp, armpits and pubic areas. Then there are the tiny, soft and usually colorless hairs called wallace hair. They are on places like our eyelids and foreheads. We have millions of hair follicles on our bodies and both males and females have about the same number. However, males seem hairier because hormones make their hair thicker. Some of our hair might have evolved for different reasons. Hair on our heads could have been influenced by how attractive it made us look. Eyebrows might help us show our feelings. Facial hair might be about communicating and attracting mates. Armpit hair might help in mating by trapping pheromones, chemical signals related to attraction. The density of hair follicles can change based on where people live and their skin color. Darker, skinned people might have fewer hair follicles. Things like hormones and sexual attraction might have something to do with these differences, but it's still not clear completely. Scientists use parasites like lice to study the history of our species. Human lice are small insects that live on our bodies and different types of lice prefer different parts like the head, body and pubic hair. By looking at genetic differences between these lice, researchers found that pubic lice that infests gorillas likely crossed over to our human ancestors about 3.32 million years ago. This implies that humans and gorillas lived in the same environment at that time. MC1R gene is responsible for our skin and hair color. Darker skin has evolved in humans to protect against harmful sunlight. Genetic evidence suggests that dark skin has been present in human lineage for at least 1.2 million years. This timeline corresponds with the idea that humans lost their hair when they were exposed to strong sunlight. The fossil record can tell us when various anatomical changes occurred in early humans. A significant change was the transition to walking on two legs. We started around 6.8 to 7.2 million years ago. Bipedalism was closely tied to hairlessness because sweating, a trait that helps humans run in heat, requires hairlessness. Various skeleton features like the Achilles tendons, foot structure, long legs, and skeleton strength gradually evolved in early humans, culminating with Homo erectus who had body proportions that allowed for endurance running similar to modern humans. Human hairlessness is a result of an evolutionary shift from having long, thick and pigmented body hair like the hair on our head to shorter, finer and non-pigmented body hair. 
This change did not mean we lost hair follicles. Humans have about the same number of hair follicles as chimpanzees. The reason behind this shift in appearance has several theories. Some suggest that humans have lost body hair to combat parasites like fleas, ticks and lice, which find refuge in fur. However, this theory has limitations as many animals coexist with parasites without losing their hair. Around 5 to 8 million years ago, climate changes caused forests to break up into smaller patches, leading to increase in tick populations. This forced our ancestors to walk on ground, where they would encounter ticks more. Those with less hair could spot and remove ticks more effectively, potentially providing an advantage against tick-borne diseases. This theory aligns with the emergence of early humans. Humans may have lost body hair due to development and use of clothing for warmth, such as animal skins and fabrics. These adaptations allowed them to reduce body hair as they relied on external coverings and shelter to stay warm. The loss of body hair might be linked to our efficient cooling system, primarily the ability to sweat through acrine glands. This adaptation was advantageous for our ancestors who needed to stay active during heat of the day in the savanna. The ability to run long distances without overheating also played a role as hairlessness maximized the efficiency of sweating and prevented excessive water loss in dry conditions. Another theory suggests that the transition to bipedalism played a crucial role in the evolution of hairlessness. In most primates, infants can cling to their mother's fur. However, as our ancestors evolved to walk on two legs, they lost the ability to grasp their mother's fur with their feet, making it difficult for mothers to carry their infants. Skin-to-skin -skin contact between a mother and her baby is very pleasurable and therefore making mothers more willing to carry their infants even when they needed to travel to gather food ensuring proper development. This hypothesis suggests that hairlessness developed to strengthen the emotional bond between mothers and infants, making it more pleasant for mothers to care for their children. Another idea suggests that our early ancestors about 5 to 8 million years ago spent a lot of time in the water, like the coasts of East Africa. Some proponents of this theory point to the fact that certain parasites that affect humans depend on contact with water. However, this hypothesis does not seem to be more logical. Melanin is the substance in our skin and hair that gives us color and helps protect us from the sun's harmful UV radiations. Some researchers believe that as our early ancestors evolved to have darker skin to protect against the sun, this also reduced their hair growth. Darker skinned individuals tend to have fewer hair follicles and shorter hair. So according to this theory, hair loss would correspond with the development of dark skin in our lineage. Charles Darwin proposed that hair loss might have happened because it made some individuals look more attractive to potential mates. It's like how some people find a clean-shaven look more appealing. But this theory does not explain why everyone in a population would lose their hair. Another idea is that hair loss could be linked to cultural factors. This means that over time people wanted to distinguish themselves from others like Neanderthals who had a lot of body hair. As a result, humans who had less hair became more preferred as mates. This cultural selection might have driven the emergence of hairlessness, which could have happened as late as when modern Homo sapiens first appeared about 300,000 years ago. In summary, anatomical and molecular evidence suggests that human hair loss occurred between 3.32 million and 1.2 million years ago. While some hypotheses have been debunked or require further research, the melanin competition hypothesis could provide insights into both hair loss and global hair distribution. Based on current knowledge, the thermoregulatory hypothesis is the most convincing explanation for the evolution of hairlessness in humans, but other factors may have reinforced this trait. Thank you for watching.